Hello viewers, these are key messages from the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education on the coronavirus. Dear parents, keep children at home at all times. Avoid sending children to shops and markets. Do not engage children in petty trading on the streets and garages. Allow children to play within the confines of the home. Limit visitors into your homes. Adhere to COVID-19 health precautions and guidelines. Schools are closed but learning continues. Dear teachers, you are encouraged to desist from all forms of group activities involving students. All school premises should remain closed and not to be used for any other purpose. Thank you.
Kole ngambulo lutu With whatever we do Jio ni safu no la With whatever we do Hale yide munyu skula Nyepam nene kudlukula Nyepam giragala gena Nyepam nene kudlukula Ibulo ke nungoto ni beti sola Ibulo ke dato ni beto do Bigi Bigi kongo Lamin Na Lamin 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 Gata <laughs> Eh, pari jamba ni vana nara mudu wala mudu wala Nkoto mina ka nga lami nje fun fili tale Lami jive nori nyala Lami nje sira wansa wana ebengi ya Yala so rotol sa indi nwa ebongo mwola kumomwe Nkoto Naam Iti di nte alone lami nha kilo di atabake karambu ngoto Anu sa nte ng Ministeri kodi nungole si suoko na Ama kipo ebo kodi si eda Si bitu, si bitu, si bitu, si bitu Bago nari, bago nari Si bitu Alani nje, alani bukede, nemo balo Alani na kosa, ina karta hapulo be damina, alani nje Nkoto Naam Nkoto mongkonta nferen, feren, feren Jamba ni mune keda Ini kan lamin ki ulo kono nyin tayi mongkodo Fede malo lamin nyan de sila la bela mwe kala karamu Jamba ni karamu wol be soran nene ko, fasi ta ulo kono ko Baba Ah ah, karamu wol ma so Niko karamu wol soran da ama ke kom Kodo Di ni wo nyan de sila la ala karamu la mwe Yamen ka ben fwe Mang kontan de, mang kontan anda mandi. Allah yang kombo kurang, ada anda Allah kombo lantau lajang karamu all soran dari orang. Kami kurang orang ada Allah kombo. Kau tuh mana nak karamu all soran jadi karamu all soran. Lain ada orang lo jinol lalu. Aman cara fena sokon. Ada mana kela? Am, lain. Ia fena malu kau lese nol dekai kar rajut. Ngapain, ngapain. Iko yang ada mood lain. Ngapain, ngapain. Ia mana fanya? Kami mina kan, kami dah, kami dah teri maning. Fatu. Ha. Kami dah lese sokon. Ada di nol bebe siri bela moika. Ah, faru dance, aku nak kami belajar di subala, dengan aje di nol belajar jalan tanding kiri waru. Ah, ibe sering jalan. Salamin faru nanti kuki lima ke nol apa, but lamin bila kau ulo kono nyentai mu, alamin. Aman dara fener lah. Ite ite di dek kau, di mana sih ya kau nak lesu nol lama rajo tu ibalon nak. Muneka ke, afon dia banyak orang dia awang. Jalan tel jikut, afon dia muneka ke. Ite balon tel bejikir ite. Ah, ni mana cara nak kuki le? Ia je nanti cara nambah sama lagi ya, itu aje. Pernyataan ni, kamu kurang orang fikir aku. Ia ni nara jadi ni songka baik. Kalau lamin mana dalam ulu, kalau kamu ada sorang, apa ni memang betul. Kamu kau tu awal ni nanti, baru ngan ni lamin, kuntal. Kamu kurang orang ikhafan ni, kamu kurang asal total. Asal total awal aku ni kau esis suokono. Baru ni kau esis suokono. Ibe, ibe kamu ada dike la raja ni telal tu. Kalau telal masuk tu, tu ni aman telal suatu labung. Baru raja ni bule aku tu. Tapi ni sanga esis ayam. Sabo kalau ni. Kalau kita ada bule. Sabo kalau ni ada. Kamu kenyal. Ada raja abu lama lagi. Ibe mana falaje? Ibe nak karam di luar kalau jele. Tidak ada raja kalau mana karam. Ah, ialah subjek kalau baby jele. Ibe baby jele. Wala nak cuci cuci mui. Fadzan sewalia. Mungkin macam mana kita nak di luar jele? Ikan bumbu kau juga dalam barang. Asal tak ada. Lain malam kita rawal ada. Bari love tak ada. Ide alam kau ini every year second wala fourth. Mana ni kau dia? Aku ni aku fon lesin lama. Dia lesin lama nampak. Masa embah fokus yang kotor. Wala fomo yang mulin dia lo fomo kita. But you fon am bulat aku kau dalam meja nanti jambi. Lamin yang tak karan, nanti beji kau begini kak. Ya bulai kara, ulo kana tak kilar, ya bantu. Yo be bulai jem kotor, dinding kau si ayah la ayah la lesi nol lamai rajut. Orang kau tak karamu orang masalah, lamin yang tak rasis suara. Lamin yang tak sila le ayah la lesi nol. Kau nak kau nak kos malam? Kilar. Kau nak beji kau kumamu? Ha. Saya beji kau, beji kau kara. Beji kau beri saya. Nego kau di lalai dabaros, nego ready apa? Nego bari war ready aje. Ha. Abe je, baru ngam lah tu mending beli dia. Yo. Kalau jalan jalan, baru ramu kafe di mall. Lamin kau tu. Lamin kau yang dabaros. Saya tak kau follow, aji beri nol ini. Lamin tak mete. Teku, 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 teku. Baru ingkar doa mu ke? Eh, emas nanyi nyambut. Ha? Sisol nak kerja, kisah kisah mana sisol? No, 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 kafung kafung kan nyawa. Baru nyambut kiron ni mana nak kafin? Ini nampak korosor lagi. Ini nampak korosor lagi. Angan ni nampet ada banyak nyambut doa di lana. Jangan nampak korosor ini pernah. Jangan nada, jangan nada. Kotor. Ha, baru faham ke dah? Eh, nada bungkon, nada bungkon. Kami pun korang, kami pun korang. Hehehe, jangan jangan dokong file. Kau tak kira barang mana yang pelu lalu jaga. Iya, ada barang mana yang pelu lalu. Bismillah. Hehehe, bismillah. Jangan pernah pendu lala. Ye fomo tangkai si nado lu tangka. Hehehe, koro, koro, koro ta. Hehehe, koro, koro.
Okay, good day, uh, viewers and listeners. Uh, I'm Samuel Emende. I'm back again with another lesson on the, the mammalian skin. But before we go into the mammalian skin, remember the last time that I gave an assignment, and, I, and the assignment reads, list three excretory organs in mammals and one excretory product by each organ. This was, uh, and I think I gave a trick question. And the next, and the other question was, describe the process of urine formation in man. And another thing I said was, name a label diagram of what the nephron. This was the assignment that I gave to you the last time. I hope you did your assignment. Okay. So now let's look at this assignment together. We said we look at what the organs of excretion and the excretory product. The first question, the organs of excretion, one is the liver. And what does the liver excrete? We said the bile pigment. I hope you, you are getting it correct. The bile pigment, the liver excrete the bile pigment, the salt, excess cholesterol. Okay, excess cholesterol, excrete urea. That's what the kidney excrete. And then we move to, uh, sorry, that's what the liver excrete. And then we move to the kidney. Let me repeat, let me repeat what the, the components that the liver excrete. We said the bile pigment, the salt, excess cholesterol, and urea again. I hope you all got this part correct. And then we move to, uh, to the kidney. What does the kidney excrete? The kidney excrete water, urea, and salt. These are other components that the kidney excrete. Water, urea, and salt. So we talk about uh, the lungs. What does the lungs excrete? Because in, uh, in our introduction, uh, in, in my class, I told that we are not going to be discussing the lungs in detail. When you come to respiration, we'll talk about it. The, the lungs. But I, I did mention to you that there are some products. The, the lungs as an organ of excretion, there are some products that it excrete. We talk about carbon dioxide, water, vapor. Carbon dioxide and water vapor. I believe you are getting these things right. So now the, the next thing that we move on to was urine formation. Okay? Urine formation how urine, urine is formed. We said urine formation. Blood is brought from the kidney by the renal artery. That's the first thing that the blood, the blood coming from the kidney is coming from what? The renal artery. After the blood coming from the kidney from the renal artery, it has to pass through what you call the glomerulus. This blood moves into the arteriolus and finally into the capillaries of the glomerulus. And I said in the glomerulus, there are a lot of what cells, and these cells they serve as a sieve, and these cells we call them the potocyte, the potocyte cells. They help you to filter some of these filtrate that's coming from what, from the from the renal from when the blood comes from the renal artery to the to the glomerulus. They filter. So, and what are some of the substances that are filtered in the glomerulus or that are allowed to pass? I told that in the glomerulus, just like a sieve, it's just like a sieve that when the blood is coming with pressure, they passes through down okay and you said water these are some of the substances that passes water urea and other nitrogenous compounds that is what you call the mineral salt and then also the mineral salt you have sugar plasma and uh, we talk about the filtered under pressure is the the capsula that's the, all this process is called the ultra filtration all this process is the ultra filtration and you also have what you call the glomerular filtrates. That is where substances move. Okay. And then also, we also, after that, it says the filtrate reaches the loop of Henle. So now the glomerulus filtrates, okay, after the filtrate reaches the loop of Henle, okay, absorption of some of this water is now being taken into the water to the to the uh, to the to the filtrates. And then after he says, as the filtrate moves upwards towards the distal convoluted tubule, the absorption of what? Salt and water is regulated. 
some of this salt and water is regulated and this is done by what the ph of the blood and the ph of the blood is being adjusted and then finally the collecting dot collects the urine and the urine is adjusted depending on the osmotic concentration of what of the blood so basically these are some of the steps that take place or that happens in urine formation i guess we are able to what to work on these things these are some of the steps that takes place in what in urine formation and then the third question i believe is, is the structure of the nephron so this is the structure of the nephron what we, what we were able to, to discuss and earlier on and we said the down part is the loop of what the henley this is what the afferent artery that's what's coming from the body the afferent artery this part is what the loop of henley and then we have the, the afferent artery where the blood is coming inside what the glomerulonephritis and then we we call here the, the proximal the proximal convoluted tubule and then we have the distal convoluted tubule and then we have the collecting dots where final readjustment takes place i hope we we got this information very very clearly we are moving to the mammalian skin and in the mammalian skin today we are going to be studying about the function of the skin and then we also look at the disease of the skin and how we can we are going to care for our skin and prevent of what skin disease and uh, the skin is very very important in our bodies and and it's one of our the largest organ of the body okay we say the skin is the largest organ of the body it is the toughest apart from the bone and the skin is made up of two layers and these layers are the dermis and the epidermis uh, the epidermis is the outer part of what of the skin whereas the dermis is the internal uh, the inner part of what, of the skin but when we come to the structure of this of the skin we will see these different layers so here what can we see okay we are seeing a skin the structure of our it is the skin and then if you look at this side here we are seeing the epidermis and this epidermis it shows the layers okay the layers the top part of our, of the skin and the other part here is what the dermis these are the two parts of the of the of the skin and then when you look at the, the different layers the the, the the conifer layers the malphigian layers and these layers they help to, to protect the, the the skin like for instance here in the in the epidermis the epidermis is the outer part of the skin and in the outer part of the skin we have the hair shaft that's where we are able to to feel okay and then we have the 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 root the root here that one is it come deep down the dermis the root here has come deep down the, the dermis and then you have the veins the veins if you are able to, to carry blood and also to, to, to for you to receive to, for you to respond to impulse in the body and also the sweat glands when you do a lot of exercise the sweat glands help to, uh, is helping there to, to excrete some of the sweats in here and then we and there are these different parts we are going to be looking at the epidermis consists of three layers namely the conified layer which is the outermost part of our, of this of the skin and is form of our dead cells if we look at our bodies on top here it is these cells are dead okay and these cells we call them the conified layers and you have also what you call the granular layer is the living part of our cell sometimes it's very difficult to, to differentiate the conifer layer and the granular layer and then the malphigian layer the malphigian layer which is having the, the color the pigmentation of, of the skin sometimes some people can be fair some of them, some other people are, are dark in complexion so it depends on the, what, to, the to the pigment or the uh, the melanin that's are found in your skin that's what we call the pigment 
And this one, it also protects the skin from danger and bacterial infection. So sometimes, some people, when you remove, or like what you do, you bleach your skin and remove that layer, the, the malfusion layer, or, or you remove the melanin. So your, your skin is being exposed to bacterial infection and or damage. Also, we move on to what the dermis. We talk about what the blood capillaries. And we say this blood capillaries is rich of what nutrients and oxygen. So this oxygen goes there to the body to supply or to the skin to supply them with, with nutrients and oxygen to give oxygen for, for body function to do, for the body to function well. And also we have what you call nerve ending and receptors. They make the skin very, very sensitive. Like for instance, when somebody touches you, we are able to realize or to able to feel that they have been touched by somebody. The nerve ending and receptors, they are very, very sensitive to what? To external environment. Okay? And you also talk about the sweat glands. This sweat gland, what do they do? They excrete urea, they excrete water, and what? Lactic acid. So these are some of the substances that is being excreted from what? The sweat gland. And the sebaceous glands secrete oil, which make the skin watery and resistant. Sometimes, uh, if you look at, sometimes some of the uh, people will advise you that it's not, it's not good for you to apply oil at night when you are going to sleep. Because during that time, the skin will perform some excretory products. And some of this oil, if it goes inside your air pores, it might block it and it may prevent some of this material to come out. Because you are not doing some, a lot of activities, you are relaxing. So that means that the sebaceous gland, they secrete oil. This oil component will, will, work, will make the hair and the skin water resistance. Also, we also have what you call the erector muscles. They regulate the posture of the hair. The hair and also regulate the body temperature. The posture muscle, they regulate the posture of the hair and the bottom. So now the adipose tissues, these are the ones that store energy and it's been used later as an insulin or insulating layer. It makes your, it makes your, work, your work lubricate, to lubricate the skin. So now, we are moving on to the, the functions of the skin. We, we just talked about the different functions of the part of the skin. So, but now we are going to look at the general function of the skin. Why is that the skin is very, very important for us to study? So now, uh, one of the things that we said, the skin is very, very important for us to study because it's a receptor of what external stimulus. Anything that comes around you, us is being detected by the skin force before it enters to the body. Like for instance, if the place is cold, you have to put on a, a sweater to protect yourself. Otherwise, you are exposing your, your body and later on you even develop some other inhaled or like diseases. And another thing also, it also helps with pain. When somebody touches you and you feel the pain, you respond. You don't still stand in that position. You have to move around. And also, we said respond to external stimulus. Another thing also, we said the skin protects our body from danger effect of what UV rays. We, we know that the sun produces rays. And these rays, they are ultraviolet rays. And uh, the danger is for some people who bleach. When they bleach, they remove the melanin component of the, of the, the malfusion layer. And when this, malf uh, this malfusion layer is being, the melanin component is removed, the rays comes directly to our body. And it can cause us to develop s some sickness like skin cancer. So that's why bleaching is not good. We, we encourage people to stop bleaching because if you don't, you are just exposing your skin to a lot of damages and later on you, you will be affected. So also we talk about this, the skin protects the body also from a mechanical, mechanical injury. Like for instance, if somebody wants to, uh, to starve you or to burn you, the first place of contact is the skin. So now the skin serves as a, a protective substance. And also the skin protects our bodies from an invasion of what pathogens and bacteria, bacteria and viruses. 
some infusions of our pathogens or bacteria and viruses. Some of these substances, when they, some of these pathogens or bacteria, when they come to our skin, when they come in contact with our skin, they cannot penetrate because our skins are resistant. But when there is an opening, when you have a cut, these bacteria and these viruses can easily enter. And also, the skin protects our body from an excess loss of water. The water that is in the body has been prevented for it to be, to be lost by the skin. And also, another important of the skin, the skin also provides us with vitamin D. When we are exposed to the sunlight, we have vitamin D. And uh, also, in regulation of our body temperature, and the last one, it has, has an excretory organ. We said the skin is the largest organ in the, in the body, except uh, it is the largest organ of the body, and it's also the toughest, except the bone. The skin has an excretory organ, excrete fluids, such as a sweat, which are contained, like we know we talked about some of the excretory uh, uh, products before, and like for instance, we talk about the skin, the skin excrete what? Sweat. And in the sweat, it contains a lot of substances. We talk about water, we talk about uh, salt, we talk about sodium chloride, and also talk about a small amount of what? Urea. During the strenuous exercise, like for instance, those who play football, those who go to the gym, those who are walking on the road, as they are moving, okay, they are, because they are continuing, uh, they are doing a lot of exercise, their body begins to produce, to excrete sweat. And some of these components that are found in the, in sweat are removed from the body. Because if they still stay there, they may cause the body, they may be portionless. You see, after excretion, the sweat passes through the sweat dot to the surface of the skin. If the internal environment is warm and dry, the water evaporates. So this is basically what the skin does as an excretory organ. Okay? We are moving to the disease of the skin. I said in the, in the, in the first slide, we are going to look at the skin as an excretory organ. We also look at the function of the skin. And we also look at the disease of the skin. And also we are also going to talk about what, how we care for our skin. Because these things, they are very, very important because it's very, very important that we care for our skin. One of the, the diseases of the skin is the retainer. It's a fungus disease that affects the dumps and moist parts of our, our body. They, they affect us or they infect, the infected parts becomes reddish and it itches. Uh, this is a type of disease uh, that affects, sometimes if you see people with skin disease, they will go to the hospital. You see, their skin is a bit rash. And it's a tenure, it's, most of these things is affected by the fungus. And these things, is affect, when it affects our body, you have to go to the hospital and prescribe the best medication that you need to take in order to, to treat it. Because of the activity of man, like agricultural work on the ground, putting playing with the soil, you easily develop some of these diseases, like fungus diseases. You can easily pick up things and it affects your body. Another thing is also what scabies. I think uh, scabies is caused by what a mite and it, the female one leaves and lays eggs under the skin. Like under the skin, sometimes some of these things you may not even realize that these things are living under your body or they are in, in your skin. You just be doing your normal activity and uh, sad to say like for some of the people who may not even bath properly you don't normally use your soap, to, you don't normally apply soap in bathing to make yourself you look clean and decent. And some of these uh, mites, they might go under your skin and lay eggs. And then afterwards, they begin to produce some severe itching and blistering. And you start scratching your body. And some of these, blist uh, and some of these things, when they form some blisters, and when you scratch, they break, and the water drops in other parts of the skin, and they also develop again. So these things, we have to take care of our skin and uh, it will help us. When you take care of skin, you look at a healthy life. And also, another thing is also athletic foot. Athletic foot is also another fungus infection. And these ones, they grow between toes. Uh, especially like if you are putting on dirty socks, most of the time you develop this athletic foot. 
and uh, it, dirty socks and dirty shoes, which are not always clean. So most of the time you develop athletic foot and sometimes they can be painful to you. And one of the things when you realize that you develop this athletic foot, one of the things that you can do, you can even use powder. It's easy to treat. You can use powder or you can use ash and then you, 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 you take care of it. But the, what we are saying here is these are skin diseases and we need to, to, to take care of them. If we don't take care, we, our body is being exposed and we are, being affect, we are affected. Another, another one is called enzyma. Enzyma is a disease as a result of what we are allergic. That's why we have this eczema. Enzyma. So one thing that you, you need to do when you, are, when you have these things, you have to look at the things where the things that you are allergic to, so that you will not have this type of disease. And then when you are allergic to these things and you still go and interacting with them, you still have what you call enzyma. We said it forms a pump, pimples and later develops to scales. Scales. It forms pimples and later it develops what you call skips. So these things, we have to be very careful when you are dealing with these uh, skin diseases. The other one, which is commonly uh, known, the ringworm. We say the ringworm is caused by some of these the tenure groups, uh, the, uh, the ringworm. So we say this, they infect, the infected parts develop a ring around, uh, a ring red spot around a clear central and severe itching. You itch a lot. That means you, to, you scratch your body too much. And sometimes it produces some water, some water around the ringworm. So how do we care for our skin? Care of the skin and prevention of some of the skin disease. How do you care for them? So for one, of it, the, one of the things that we need to do, our skin color, it is determined by what you call the melanin pigment. And in melanin pigment, some people apply bleaching materials, like some of these cosmetic materials on their bodies, in order to look fair. Okay? So when they are applying, they remove what? The melanin. And when the melanin is being removed, our bodies have been what? Exposed. So now when our body is being exposed, the ultraviolet, when they come from this one, they can easily go through our skin and damage our skin. So that's why we need to, to be extra careful. What you, the type of cream that you apply on our skin, it's very, very important because when you destroy the melanin, it will be very difficult to replace it. You cannot replace it. So your body is being exposed. Any infection that comes around, it can pass through our skin. Okay, so you can be easily immunocompromised. The skin should be kept clean by bathing regularly with soap, and preferably using sponge. You know, some people also, when they are bathing, they prefer to use this hard brush. As they are using this hard brush, they are brushing on their skin. And as they are doing that, they are peeling the melanin. So it is preferable you use a sponge when you are bathing. There's no need for you to, to, scrub, to scrub too much. Because uh, some people, like for instance, when they, when they have pimples around their, their faces, they think that by scrubbing very hard, it, the pimples may go off or whatever. That is not the case. We just need to, 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 to take bath and use a sponge. You just clean it gently and then it will go off. Another thing also that you are talking about, how do we care for our skin, is our nails. And uh, this one is very, very difficult with the ladies or with, with the women. Most of them, they prefer to keep their nails long. And even in, in, because when some of these nails, you, you, remove, you leave them long, it has a lot of what, uh, bacteria and viruses. And some of these eggs, uh, eggs of some of these mites might go there and develop and start growing, growing there. So if, uh, it's an advice so that our ladies and our sisters should try to, to keep their nails short. Because if you do that, you reduce a lot of what, viruses and bacteria that you are, like for instance, you are moving around and you are moving with viruses and this bacteria and you are not seeing it. And some of these people, they prepare food for us, for the general family, and we eat. And sometimes some of these things are passed because they are found in their, their nails. And the saddest thing is like sometimes when they have program, you see they, they do some nail attachment 
and you look at them, they are very, very long. Though they might be beautiful, but they are long. But a lot of these bacteria and these viruses are kept there. Even in the medical field, they will always advise you to keep your, your nails very, very short and moderate. So that's why it is very, very important for us to keep our nails short at all time and clean. Here should be washed regularly with soap and shampoo. This one, it goes to some of the boys. Like for instance, those who play football. They play football, they go and play around. Sometimes, you know, you, you come, come back from the field, you, 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 you don't cut your hair short, your hair is bushy, and you don't take care of them. You don't take care of your hairs. Because some of the people who leave their hairs, they take care of them. If you look at them, if you look at the hairs, you, you like their hair. But if you know that you cannot take your hair, uh, take care of it, I think the best thing is that you always cut it short all the time and make sure that you are looking uh, presentable or good looking. Clean clothes, dirty clothes also have pathogens. Like for instance, you put on your clothes for three, four days. You see, the clothes becomes dirty. When you put on it, maybe one or two times, you pack it and, or you go and wash it. But sometimes people will continue using their clothes, even their dirty, they still go, go around. So this is why some of these diseases, they are also being transferred to the skin and you develop the skin disease. So I think this care, the care of the skin and prevention of some of the skin disease is very, very important. That we, uh, it is not difficult to be observant, to observe yourself every day when you are leaving your, home, your home and when you are coming back, you, you, you observe yourself and see what are some of the things, the checklist. Do I care for my skin regularly? Did I was, uh, are my nails kept short? My hair, did I maintain a, a low hair cut or clothing materials? So I will leave you with this assignment today. We are saying that, describe the function of the mammalian skin. What is the function of the mammalian skin? That's what we are going to be describing today. And we say briefly describe the three ways in which we can care for our skin. This is the assignment that I'm leaving for you today. So until I come your way next time, I was a teacher, Samuel Amende. Thank you. Thank you.